Hello! Welcome to Farms TV College U Program's Butterfly House here at Hawthorne Valley. Why don't you come on in with me? This structure has been built in March of this year and has been populated with native perennial plants from the farm. Each week this summer we've collected butterflies that are in the area and have brought them inside so we can have visitors come and check out and see what's flying in Columbia County. After each week we release them back into the outdoors. We hope you enjoy this short film about the life cycle of a butterfly inspired by the butterflies in Columbia County and those that we have in the butterfly house. A lot of people ask, what's the difference between a moth and a butterfly? And that's actually a hard question to answer because they're very closely related insects. And you can actually think of a butterfly as a kind of a moth that has adapted to fly during the day. We have moths that fly during the day as well, so it's not an absolute rule. But um, there are other things you can look at uh, that can help you tell a moth from a butterfly. Their antennae, for example, are different. Butterflies tend to have antennae that are clubbed at the end. They have a little little ball or clump or a club at the end of their antennae. Moths don't have these. They have antennae that taper off or that are feathery. So that's one feature that can help you tell them apart. And it's best to think of them as kind of of the, the same group, but there all are some general differences. Butterflies have a four-stage life cycle. It's egg, caterpillar, pupa, and adult. And there are some other uh, kind of sub-stages nested within these different major stages of their life. Like all insects, butterflies first begin as an egg that was laid by an adult. The amount of time that they are in the egg varies depending on what type of butterfly they are, but it's usually between three and seven days. This is an egg laid by a monarch butterfly on a milkweed plant. It takes about three to five days for a monarch caterpillar to hatch from an egg once it has been laid. Different caterpillars feed on different plants. Butterfly eggs are laid on a specific plant, so when they hatch, the caterpillar can feed from that specific plant. When caterpillars emerge from their egg, their main goal is to eat. Some caterpillars will even eat their eggshell for initial boost of protein. Do you think plants want little caterpillars crawling around and chomping their leaves and stems? The answer is no. Plants come up with all sorts of defense mechanisms to keep their leaves from being eaten, such as fine hairs, little horns, or toxins inside that make the herbivore sick. Over time, species of caterpillars have learned how to eat from certain plants. These are called their host plants. The relationship between caterpillars and the plants they have learned to eat is called a specialist relationship. Milkweed is the host plant of monarch caterpillars. The monarch caterpillars have evolved to be able to digest the toxic compound in milkweed that most insects and animals can't ingest. This is why some caterpillars are brightly colored and patterned. If a bird eats a monarch caterpillar and gets sick from the toxic milkweed compounds, it will be less likely to feed on that caterpillar again because it will recognize the pattern and remember that it became ill. As the caterpillar continues to eat, it will also shed or molt layers of skin. Each time it sheds and grows, it is now in a new instar stage. Caterpillars can go through five instar phases. When the time comes, the well-fed caterpillar makes its way to a safe place hangs upside down and molts into its hard, shiny chrysalis, also known as a pupa. Inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar undergoes an incredible transformation of becoming a butterfly, known as metamorphosis. The process involves the caterpillar digesting itself, then using rapid cell division to create all the features of the adult butterfly. While butterfly caterpillars make chrysalises, moth caterpillars make cocoons. A cocoon is also a pupa, but is made of the silky material that moth caterpillars weave around themselves before pupating. You may have noticed the gilded gold highlights on some butterflies' chrysalids. Chrysalis actually comes from the Greek word chrysos, meaning gold. In the case of monarch butterflies' chrysalis, the crown of gold points on their chrysalis, called the diadem, 
likely comes from the carotenoid pigments that are inside the milkweed plants they eat. Carotenoids are pigments that make something yellow, orange, or red, such as carrots. Why might butterflies want their chrysalises to have glittery gold on them? One theory is that the gold highlights on the chrysalis act as camouflage. They make the chrysalis harder to detect, and the shiny material resembles water droplets on leaves. Depending on the species of butterfly and the conditions outside, a caterpillar can stay in its chrysalis from 5 to 21 days. The color and transparency of the chrysalis usually begin to change as the caterpillar begins to transform inside of it. Monarch chrysalises start out very green and opaque and begin to get more transparent over time to the point where you can make out the wings and other parts of the butterfly. Unlike the caterpillars, which have a very specific relationship to the plants they eat, butterflies can feed from a wide range of flowers. Butterflies are after the nectar inside flowers, which is a sugary water that plants produce to attract pollinators. Well, first of all, we, we always think of the flowers that they offer to butterflies. The adult butterflies drink nectar from many, many different types of flowers. Um, what we don't often think of is that adult butterflies also eat rotten fruits. So when you see fallen apples, there might be butterflies eating on them. And they also drink sap from trees in the spring. Um, and then the other part that uh, plants offer to butterflies is of course their leaves, because most butterfly caterpillars actually eat leaves. And that's where the distinction between native and non-native plants becomes important because um, most of our native butterflies are used to eating leaves of particular native species of plants. And with non-native plants that get introduced from other places, it takes the butterflies a while to get used to being actually able to eat them. So in the spring, butterflies come to wild columbine and the beard tongue. In early summer, they come to wild bergamot, um, to blazing star, to purple coneflower. Later in the summer, we have them on the blue lobelia. And then in the fall, you have them on the asters and goldenrods and native sunflowers. So it changes throughout the year. Actually, they pollinate pretty much by accident. So butterflies come visit the flowers um, in order to find nectar. They don't eat pollen. And when they stick their tongue into the flower to get the nectar, they sometimes pick up some pollen and then when they go to the next flower, they might deposit the pollen. So it's something that the butterfly, I'm pretty sure, does unconsciously, <laughs> um, but it nevertheless does it. The colors and patterning of butterfly wings are some of their most beautiful qualities. They also have different functions. The color and pattern can help butterflies camouflage to their surroundings. Patterning on butterfly wings can help to break up their shape, which makes it harder for predators to detect them. Sometimes the distinct color can act as a warning to predators. Monarch butterflies' bright orange wings serve as a reminder to predators that they are toxic to eat. The viceroy is a butterfly that is nearly identical to the monarch. For a while, it was thought that viceroys mimicked monarchs because monarchs were known to predators as being poisonous. But actually, both species are poisonous, so the resemblance to one another serves to doubly protect them from predators. Lastly, the bright colors and patterns of butterflies attract mates, which all butterflies need to do in order to reproduce and continue the cycle. Butterflies have developed different ways to cope with sub-freezing temperatures, and here in Columbia County, we certainly experience cold winters. So our butterflies either stay here and produce kind of like an antifreeze in their bodies so that their bodies do not freeze solid, which would kill them, or they do something totally different, they migrate. So some of our butterflies, like the monarch, will, will avoid the cold temperatures by flying south. And we have other species of butterflies that do this as well, including uh, the painted lady and the, and the American lady. They're also migrating butterflies that will uh, generally leave before those temps get b below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. For the ones that stay, 
they have evolved to produce this antifreeze at some point in their life cycle. So some butterflies will overwinter as an egg, like some hair streak species. So those eggs can tolerate that cold temperature. Others will overwinter as a caterpillar or a pupa or even an adult. And so they have to produce that glycerol, that antifreeze, so they can, they can tolerate those cold temperatures. A lot of their ecological value is, is that they feed um, a lot of different kinds of wildlife, especially birds. Um, the caterpillars of, of butterflies and, and certainly moths too are, are crucial for birds, especially many of our songbirds. And then other kinds of animals will also be feeding on those caterpillars. So they're really like a foundation of the food web and, and that causes them to be very important ecologically. Depends on where you are and what time of year it is. So. Standing right here, right now, what's flying around a lot are the pearl crescents. You see a lot of them. You see some eastern tailed blues, some ringlets. They were out in the spring, they're back again now. Monarchs are coming through. You see the occasional viceroy and a smattering of the different swallowtails. Uh, that's what we have this year. If this were a different year, you might have more great spangled fritillaries, for example. Uh, you might have more red admirals. There are some, but I have not seen very many of them. So it's a that's one of the things that makes it interesting is there's not a set answer to that question. Well, I think Butterfly House came about as a way of trying to think of drawing people into the outdoors. So we thought the Butterfly House is a way of familiarizing people with butterflies and then maybe encouraging them to take a step out into the field. So it is trying to get people to see, to recognize, to appreciate butterflies. And then I think everything that you get familiar with tells you a story. And so if you get familiar with butterflies, you can recognize different species. And then you go out and you see where those species are, are occurring. And you see whether they're common one year or not common the next year. Then you start to sort of learn about the rhythms. And that brings empathy and compassion to the natural world.